Um, first, I will just start with the first one that I see up here. Um, May from Victoria Wilson, she said, how have you navigated this socially responsible way of running a business with those narrow profit margins that I know it creates? What are tips to overcome those challenges? Um, I think that it is, can, can, can everybody hear me? Yeah, okay. I think it's um, one of those things where you don't stop navigating and you don't stop thinking about it. Um, you, you just can't, they're just, they just go hand in hand. Um, I'm constant, as a small business, I'm constantly thinking about the bottom line and how I can balance that with all of um, the other, um, I don't even wanna call them social initiatives because they're not, it's just how we run our business. But all of those other things like living wages and working um, to better our community um, and being environmentally responsible, it just it just goes hand in hand. And it's every day, um, I want to say every second of every day, I'm weighing those and it's not easy being a small business, but it's just um, what, what we have to do. And I, I think the tips would be that um, we would not be responsible business owners unless we always had that at the um, on our radars and always thinking about ways to do that and challenging ourselves and pushing ourselves to to think, hey, can we do more? Yes, and I think we can always do more, never getting too comfortable on there. Um, the next question is for, actually, it goes right along. I'm going to do this one next for Vince. It was from, actually, from Sadiqwa. We were talking about this boldness, this radical, you know, every, I think everyone hit on it. Even May talking about donating, you know, tips when she's already a small social business, um, socially enterprise business. But how do we get people to be fearless about making the right decision? I think that is a question um, a lot of people have had on here is like this. This all sounds great virtually in the boxes. How do we put it into action? Sorry about that. It, ta it takes a, uh, you know, you're setting a culture and, and communicating it, and you can't stop teaching it. And, um, and I think we talk about consequences a lot on if you don't, more than if you do. I, unfortunately, we have some examples of what uh, can happen if you don't here in the athletic department from uh, from the NCAA, but I think it also we get it. We talk about that when it relates to our financials. When you don't, um, the way you travel, what you spend, um, the things you do, um, it when it becomes um, when you create the buy-in, it becomes easier to, as I say, to to make the tough decisions. Um, if you don't, and you're the outlier making the the hard decision, uh, yeah, that's tough. But when you've got everybody going in the right direction, your stomach doesn't get butterflies when it's time to tell, um, you know, a, a person that doesn't fit to go away. When it tells someone to don't spend money on that, that initiative, um, you know, as, as we look at these things, why, you know, why the decision we make, we constantly harp on the values. I know it sounds, I know it sounds corny, but um, if you have them set and you created them all together and people aren't following them, it's easy to call them out. It makes it easier to get people to do the right thing. So it is a process. It does take time. It takes commitment from the top. Um, but it, I believe, you know, and I'm, I'm not naive to what's going on because we asked for feedback and self-assessment, as you can tell. Um, but you've really got to have it embedded in that organization. And, uh, and we do it. And I do it not just with the staff, as you heard. I'm, you know, I'm doing it with teams and leaders, uh, our student leaders. Um, but you've got to invest the time to make sure they're all connected together. And I think that was something we heard from a number of people was investing the time, but also we heard even Vince said it, a lot of people said it on here, you have to invest the money sometimes. It, just like Sadiqa was saying, uh, we should be paying people. People are worth their product if they are on there, but if you want to make change, you have to really invest. I think that includes a conversation around time and money. Um, a couple more questions from the public, and then we had a couple more even coming in now. One is for Jonathan, and let me pull it back up so I don't misread it. Um, Nascent says, I'd like to start buying App Harvest produce whenever possible. Is App Harvest produce sold under the App Harvest brand name? Yeah, you can, you can look for the hills. Let me move. So that little hill in the middle there. Uh, so we, we're, we're branded on store shelves. We'll be having more branding. Uh, Martha Stewart joined our board earlier this year. Uh, we, we're in the classic scenario where we, we, the, the demand outseeds the supply. So we're, 
work, work to, tomatoes are available everywhere. I think I've seen from Detroit down to Southern Florida. Uh, so so th- we've got them through the region. We, we're working hard to build more facilities, get more production online. But the easiest thing you can do is, is and here's what we found out through the grocer world. Uh, the largest grocers, they actually do listen to their store manager who then speaks to the district manager who then talks uh, to head, headquarters. Everybody go rip roar through the, the produce aisle and go to the, go, to the, go to the managers and not just app harvest, just say, hey, we, we want US grown produce and we want it from people who are paying a living wage and offering healthcare. They're listening. And, the, and these, the, these big box stores, they feel the pressure, not just in the grocer world, but it comes from the consumers up. And if the consumers are saying, I wanna buy products that are made in the US where people are paying a living wage and they're offering healthcare, let's put pressure on everybody else in agriculture to live up to what we're doing. I don't understand how we're doing it and we can do it profitably and how everybody else in agriculture is not doing it. So uh, more importantly, start at the grocery store aisle, go to your store manager, tell them you want US grown uh, where they're paying a living wage and offering healthcare. And I think that's even another conversation. I know even I've done stories with Sadiqua, we've done stories with leaders here, business leaders, affordable housing, what is affordable? You know, what is living wage, not just living wage so you can eat, you know, beans every day. So thank you so much, Jonathan. My next question is for uh, Sadiqua. She mentioned, you know, that perfect example of, you know, there's 11 board seats filled. Now we have one more left. We got to call our, you know, we got to call Sadiqua. I mean, I think news reporters do this as well. Like, oh, there was a black issue. We have to talk to Sadiqua. She has become, you know, and again, this is funny, but it's just, you know, you can't go to one black person to speak for everyone at that end of the day. How do we work as businesses to not make hiring and being inclusive and not even just hiring, make an inclusive workplace and not make it an afterthought. And is it okay to make, you know, we have to have hit these marks. Do you think it has to be benchmarks or is it too rigid to do that as well? No, I, I, I think benchmarks are very good. I, I really do. I think you set goals for, you have to really be honest about where you are and then set a goal for where you want to be. I mean, you want to be able to measure your success and you want to use that data like you would um, data around any other issue. I also think it's really important to ask questions. Um, go back to your HR department and, and look at, you know, where are we advertising? Uh, when are we advertising? Are we reaching out? Are we, are we actually casting the net? And then when you get down to the resumes coming in, how are we screening them? Are there keywords that we are just sort of tossing away? Um, there was a, a group that came in, we do some training with. And they had a, sent a law, a law firm resumes. And this is in the very recent past, very recent past. They sent resumes and, and the same person, identical resume. On one resume, he, called, he used his name, Tyrone. On another, he used TJ. Same identical resume. He was the president of the Black Law Students Association. So it was clear what his race was. Tyrone got no interviews. TJ got interviewed. I mean, it's just those kinds of things that we have to really talk about within our companies and look at what we're doing and where we are and look at the numbers and not just how many um, employees you have and how many people of color, how many black people, but really where are they in the company? Have they really had and do they have the opportunity for advancement or opportunities to walk in um, with the same education as a white counterpart and be paid the same? You know, those are the kinds of things we can't be, it's a, it's a, it's a good business decision to be intentional about every business decision. And I think that the moral argument is not the one that we have been winning. So I'm more prepared now. Let's make that business case and talk about who's buying, um, who's doing what, where, and show that it is going to be important. You, you just need different um, trains of thought and perspectives at any table, at any table. And, and I don't I know, even, Jonathan, Jonathan saw the questions about his flannel shirt. He's got, about I know he's popping. I'm like, that is everything. <laughs> the, the one thing I would say too, and I've talked to a lot of universities here. Um, I'm, I'm a graduate of, of a university here. And look, they, whether it's companies or universities or anywhere, if you've got the authority to hire and people are, or if that example of Tyrone and TJ, whoever's in charge of that, fire them. Like that's it. Just, you know, have conviction, stand by that conviction, 
And if you want to be a leader in an organization, then get other leaders out the back door. Because if we don't think that there are droves and droves of leaders that do not to be, deserve to be leaders inside of organizations right now, we're just delusional and we're kidding ourselves. So first step, hold people accountable and get them out the back door. It's not just about process and procedures. That's great. I love process. I love procedures. But at the end of the day, you got to make the hard decisions and get people out the back door. Oh, yeah. And I think even you mentioned pulling a chair to the table. We've been saying there's no seat at the table, but pulling a chair to the table for people as well. And just a small recap, we have a little bit more time. But just to say I, what I was hearing from Sadiqa, from Jonathan, from Vince, from May, from everyone, from Scott, even for this whole certification is empathy. You know, thinking, you know, has this person had take the time to intentionally, you know, think about how this may affect someone else, how this may affect, you know, um, other people as well. Um, I'm going to keep it moving. I can say a thousand things about everything that's been said, but we have one final question that everyone gets on the on the panel I need to answer. Um, obviously, there's more information as well about the new certification on Canopy's website that's also dropped in there. Some people have shared their contact information as well in the comments, um, but the last question for everyone is what is one thing we can all do now to support people and planet? Um, and how about we just go in the order that we went for speakers? So May, if you can go first. Marvis, can you repeat that question for me? I was typing a comment to you saying that you oh. were a rock star. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm kind of like, I'm like, I don't know how this is going. I hope that Scott's not gonna be like, you did horrible. But anyway, <laughs> thank you guys for having me even here. I actually just messaged someone with Canopy, really appreciating this conversation. But the final question is just, what is one thing we can all do now to support people and planet? I think that we can, I think um, Jonathan had mentioned this earlier, somebody asked him, how can we identify app harvest um, fruits? And he actually took the spotlight away from himself completely and said, you know, just go to your grocer and say, I want products that pay um, people a living wage and benefits. And I think we can do that with every aspect of our life with as consumers, we can make that demand um, with the restaurants we go to with the products we buy and just keep that at the forefront of every decision we make when we're buying things. Mm -hmm. Vince, if you can go next for us. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think we think about sustainability in a lot of ways in athletics and we actually have a sustainability committee and then Michael Ortman, who's one of our associate athletic directors, um, you know, works on those efforts. It doesn't matter whether it's how we take care of our, our playing fields, if they're grass, how we, you know, in terms of trees, um, the things that are used in the, in the uh, uh, stadiums, the arenas uh, related to service, uh, you know, the paper cups, plastic, all those things. I mean, we try to be thoughtful about uh, all the things that we touch related to uh, environment now. And that's been a kind of an initiative over the last few years that we've, we've gotten into because we know how important that is. Um, you know, and I think when it, when it comes to some of the comments made around, uh, you know, the additional expense uh, that some of these initiatives have, Generally, if you're measuring the return on investment, it's there. As I say, sometimes you may not see it right away, but I keep using the word, it's not a coincidence when you have positive results. And I think it's because it's consistent with the other quote unquote investments you're making in your, your business. So you the question, just in case you, I need to repeat it again, but just, you know, how do we make that impact with people and planets? Yeah, I, I think the thing is, in, in, every, in every regard, truthfulness. Um, what we have been able to be is dishonest for too long, whether it be about people, whether it be about the planet and climate change and all of these other things, um, we have got to have honesty. We've got to be willing to sit with discomfort so that we can really make the change. And I think, um, in fact, it is really the only thing that is sustainable is truth. And so if we really start from an honest perspective, if you think about what Jonathan said, if you think about what Vince is talking about, May, everybody. I mean, you if you're being dishonest about the facts underlying it all, you can never really have the change. And so I think uh, more than anything, um, I, I think it's time for us to demand truth. And so even following what Jonathan said, right, going into the grocery store and saying, listen, we wanna buy, U.S. produce um, produced with from a company, or, you know, on a farm where they are, you know, doing this, this, and this. I think that's really important for us. And and I can I just say this other thing because y'all took some of my time, so I just let me add. <laughs> we have built a fifty-three million dollars sports and learning complex that will open soon. We set a goal of forty percent black spend. It's unheard of in Kentucky. 
you can do anything you set your mind to. All of this about not being able to find people that we can do anything we are intentional about and we are to aligned and together about, but we have to just start from a place of truth. God, I, know you can. I know who your first event is. <laughs> yes, it is. So do I. I'm excited. I'm actually going to, Scott, I'm going to do Jonathan and then go to you so you can maybe wrap us up a little bit more too. Um, Jonathan, if you can answer our yeah, I, they, these all sound like complex problems, but we can send a man to the moon. We can figure out the rest of this. It's not, it's not difficult. We got to put our minds to it and work together. Uh, the one thing I would say for everybody, and, and we do it all day, you vote with your dollar. You know, be loud about your dollar. You work hard for your dollar, so make sure you put your dollars where you actually want to support stuff. And even if you might spend five or ten percent more, you're going to feel good about it. You'll feel good about what you put on. Feel good about what you give your kids, what you give your wife or your husband. Vote with your dollar and be loud about it. John and Jonathan, you stole my thunder. So you might, my, my sentiment in this is that this, this is a revolution. This is a paradigm shift. We are redefining capitalism. And part of the fuel in this revolution are the changing the habits of spending. It is going to be integral because... We've got, a, we've got a group of people here that represent the low-hanging fruit. We've got people in this, uh, participating in this. You've got Brad out in Lexington. You've got all kinds of folks here that, that already buy into this. The work is going to be getting those people that are on the fence, those business owners that are sitting back going, how is this going to affect my bottom line? How is this going to make this good business? And, and the argument it, it has to be made in terms of what is the business case? And those spending, it might not seem like much, but if we could get 20% of the state to spend a little bit more dollars around buying local, around researching, and you know, imagine a day where we had labels on all products like uh, we see in the grocery store that shows what it's made of, but, but now it shows what's the company made of. You get labels that say, this is a company that does A, B, C, and D. We as, as, as consumers, are gonna be the fuel that drives this change. And we need all of you.